Kalispera Seolos. Good evening and welcome. I'm Lisa Freeman, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at UIC, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you tonight to the investiture of Professor Nicholas Dumanis as the Foundation for Hellenic Studies, Illinois Chair in Hellenic Studies. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our honored guests, the members of the Board of the Foundation for Hellenic Studies, Illinois, Lucas Cazonas, Stratos Scarpathiotis, Peter Parthen Par Parthensis, Elias Motsakis, and Georgia Demeros. I would also like to acknowledge that many members of the Greek American community in Chicago uh, are here with us tonight, as well as those of you who are joining via live stream. We are honored to have you here with us for this special event. The Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois was founded in 2001 to celebrate the Hellenic experience and promote its understanding and importance through courses, content, and programs that focus on Hellenic history, culture, and modern Greek language. Through the generous support of the Greek American community, it raised over a million dollars to fund and support the Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois Chair at the University of Illinois, Chicago. We, are, we are at UIC are incredibly grateful for the reciprocal partnership we've enjoined with the Foundation over many years. It is now my pleasure to introduce the President of the Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois, Lucas Cazonas, Esquire. Lucas Cazonas received his bachelor's degree from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and his JD and Master of Laws from Georgetown University. He is an attorney and certified public accountant in Chicago, specializing in corporate and real estate matters. He serves as outside general counsel to many private businesses, guiding legal strategy for significant and complex matters associated with the business and legal affairs of the companies and their owners. He also serves on the board of directors of, Par uh, board of, directors of Parkway Bank Corp. Incorporated, where he it chairs its compensation committee and serves on its audit committee. We are grateful to have Mr. Cazonas here today to so help solemnize the investiture of Professor Dumanis and would like to welcome him to the podium now to say a few words. Lucas. Good evening. Thank you, Dean Freeman, for your kind introduction. Tonight's investiture is a significant milestone, not only for the Foundation for Hellenic Studies and the University of Illinois Chicago, but for the entire Hellenic and Philhellenic communities. This journey began over two decades ago when Greek American civic leaders established the foundation and set out to endow a chair in Hellenic Studies. Before proceeding any further, we must take a moment to recognize a few individuals who were pivotal in this endeavor. It began with Alexi Janulius, who initiated this effort with Peter Parthenis, and who were joined almost from the beginning by Dr. George Alexopoulos, Dr. George Scarpathiotis, and Dr. Tom Petropoulos. We would not be here without their leadership, vision, and passion. Peter Parthenis is in the audience here with us today. Dr. George Scarpathiotis. <laughs> Dr. George Scarpathiotis couldn't make it today and the other founders are no longer with us, but this chair is forever a part of their legacy. The foundation's founders and its supporters were guided by the belief that confining Hellenic studies to antiquity only told part of the story. And to best appreciate Hellenic history, Hellenic culture, and the Greek language, it needed to be placed in a broad historical and contemporary context. Moreover, they recognized that the best place for this understanding to flourish was at a world-class academic institution like UIC, in a dynamic city like Chicago, and with a vibrant and Greek-American community. While filling this position may have taken longer than some would have liked, we could not have asked for a more fitting inaugural scholar. Professor Nicholas Dumanis is an, ex an exceptional scholar whose work reflects a deep understanding of Hellenic culture, history, and its people. His scholarly contributions and academic interests aligned perfectly with the Foundation's mission of celebrating the Hellenic experience and promoting its understanding and importance. The Foundation takes immense pride in its involvement in this historic occasion. 
We know that this chair will help illuminate the complexity of Hellenism and its enduring influence on our world for generations to come. A heartfelt thank you to UIC, who has been an incredible partner in this undertaking and for its unwavering commitment to Hellenic Studies. On behalf of the Foundation for Hellenic Studies and its board, I extend a warm Chicago welcome to Professor Dumanis, celebrate this remarkable achievement, and eagerly anticipate our continued and future partnership. Thank you. Thank you for those wonderful remarks, Lucas. Now please join me in welcoming the Consul General of Greece in Chicago, Emmanuel Kubarakis. We are very honored to have him join us today. Mr. Kubarakis has been a diplomat for Greece for many years, joining the Chicago mission in 2021, um, which includes 12 states under its jurisdiction and serves one of the largest and most historic Greek communities abroad. Born in Switzerland and educated at the Sorbonne, Mr. Kubarakis began his career as an embassy attache at the Diplomatic Academy in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Athens, Greece. He was the third secretary in the permanent mission of Greece in the Office of Security and Cooperation in Europe, located in Vienna, before returning to Athens to serve in a number of diplomatic posts for several years. He became the first secretary counsel, counsel in the Consulate General of Greece in New York in 2013, where he served for four years. He then served the Greek consular mission in Ethiopia and again in Athens before assuming his post in Chicago. As he explained in 2021 to the National Herald, the paper of record of the Greek diaspora community, Mr. Kubarakis's goals as Consul General in Chicago are to foster ties to Greece among the Greek American community and to support that community's progress and prosperity. It is now my great honor to turn the program over to Mr. Kubarakis to de deliver his remarks on this wonderful occasion. Honorable Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, Dr. Freeman, Honorable Chancellor of the UIC, Dr. Miranda, Honorable Head of the Department of History, Dr. Schultz, Honorable Head of the Department of Classics, Dr. Kim, Honorable President of the Foundation for Hellenic Studies, Mr. Kozonis, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Kalispera sas. It is a great honor and a privilege to be here among you this afternoon on a historic day. Allow me to say that during the two years of my tenure here in Chicago, I consider this day as one of the most important. Because today in this room, we are planting a seed. All of us today, we plant a tree in whose shade we know we shall never sit. And we are witnessing our community grow because that is how communities grow, with the efforts of its members towards the future generations. When the first Greeks arrived in this country, not by choice, but by need, they built schools before they built their own houses. When my family arrived in Chicago two years ago, before anything else, we enrolled our daughters to the Greek Saturday School of St. George in Chicago. Edipsa Yamathisi. The thirst for knowledge has over time been one of the characteristics of our communities worldwide, and we take special pride in it. Across the United States, the Greek American community has made a remarkable progress socially, scientifically, and financially, and it is our duty to ensure that the future generations continue this successful path. Two of our greatest poets and Nobel Prize winners, Yorgos Seferis and Odysseus Selitis, during their acceptance speeches, both acknowledge the importance of the language in maintaining the Greek identity. Their words of wisdom should remain with us. The Greek American community is counting a presence of more than a century in the United States. To this day, we meet people of Greek origin in every state, in every smaller or bigger city. People who have kept their identity alive, who speak Greek and live like Greeks. 
They are, as we like to say, the informal ambassadors of Greece abroad. They have created a very positive image of Greece among the American citizen who visit Greece and want to know more, not only about our country, but about Hellenism, which is a much wider notion that transcends the boundaries of the Greek state. I welcome the investiture of the Chair for Hellenic Studies in Illinois. I know how long and hard this process has been and I would like to thank the numerous people, Greeks and non-Greeks, who have worked hard to make this chair a reality. I deem these chairs as beacons of Hellenism in the United States. These chairs are not designed for Greeks, quite the contrary. They are aiming at attracting non-Greeks, the new generation of Philhellenes. The Philhellenes have rendered significant support to our country during our struggle for independence back in 1821. Now again, we need modern Philhellenes to love and advocate for Greece internationally. I would also like to conclude by warmly congratulating Professor Nicolas Dumanis for his investiture and wish him every success in his challenging mission. He has a difficult task on his shoulders, but I'm confident that he will accomplish it successfully. The Consulate General of Greece in Chicago is looking forward to working with you, Professor, and to support you in your mission. Thank you. Sasef Haristo. Thank you so much for those remarks. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Professor Nicholas Dumanis, the Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois Chair in Hellenic Studies. Nicholas Dumanis is a renowned historian whose ex expertise is on the history of Greece, modern Europe, global history, empires, and the Greek diaspora. He is the author of many books, including the Edinburgh History of the, of the Greeks, the 20th and early 21st centuries, before the nation, Christ Christian Muslim coexistence and its destruction in late Ottoman Anatolia, and a history of Greece from the Bloomsbury Essential Histories series. His articles have appeared in numerous prestigious journals and anthologies. He has presented at conferences, workshops, and seminars throughout the world, and he has given interviews and commentary on television and radio. He has been decorated by his peers for his scholarly accomplishments many times over. He was awarded the Frankel Prize in Contemporary History from the Institute of Historical Research and the Wiener Library for his book, Myth and Memory in the Mediterranean, was Stanley J. Seeger Fellow in Hellenic Studies at Princeton University, and received an Erasmus Plus International Credit Mobility Teaching Grant from the University, of, University College Dublin. Given UIC's historic and current close ties with the Greek American community in Chicago and our location in Chicago's Greek town, Professor Dumanis' chairship is not only of enormous benefit to our university, it is an advantage to Hellenism in Chicago and indeed in the United States. As Professor Dumanis recently said in an interview with the Greek News Agenda, quote, Greeks are resilient and resourceful. They have always had to be mobile, they have always had to work with less." Unquote. That spirit of resourcefulness, excellence, and achievement is evident in Professor Dumanis' hometown of Sydney, as well as here in Chicago, and it is what has enabled us to welcome Professor Dumanis to UIC. A child of Greek parents who immigrated to Australia, Professor Dumanis is not only an expert in the field of Greek history, he is intimately acquainted with Greeks and Greekness. In Sydney, Professor Dumanis was the go-to historical expert in the, in the Greek community there, and he is also the founder and, in, and inaugural director of the Greek Australian Archive of New South Wales, Australia. He has been invited to speak to public audiences at the Greek Festival of Sydney, the Greek Orthodox Community of Melbourne, and the State Library of New South Wales, among many, many others. In short, there could not be a better person to fill the role of Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois Chair in Hellenic Studies at UIC. So once again, a heartfelt thank you to the Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois 
LAS is proud to be the college that houses this important chair, and we are thrilled to formally invest Professor Dumanis with the chair. Now, without further ado, Professor Dumanis and Chancellor Miranda, please come forward. So I'm a new chancellor. This is my first time doing this, and I'm really excited. Are you excited? Are you, are you ready? I'm ready? I'm gonna read the magic words. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the University of Illinois, I am proud to recognize Dr. Nicholas Dumanis as the holder of the Foundation for Hellenic Studies, Illinois Chair in Hellenic Studies. It is a pleasure that we have the opportunity to bring together the university's constituents to celebrate this momentous occasion. Professor Dumanis, I welcome you to the podium to accept this honor. Chancellor, Dean, members of the Hellenic Studies Foundation, ladies and gentlemen, and other distinguished guests. It's a great honor to be appointed to uh, the Foundation of Hellenic Studies, Illinois Chair in Hellenic Studies. Indeed, it's the greatest honor to assume a position that has significance for the Greek public of Chicago and to UIC, which has a special relationship with the Greek community. The campus was largely built on Greek town, and many Chicago Greeks and newly alive, uh, arrived Greek nationals studied at UIC, and they have maintained strong attachments to the university. Members of the Hellenic Foundation, and in some cases their parents met at UIC, this is an organic connection. I want to talk about the diaspora, and I will start with an observation. Before my campus visit last year, I had never been to Chicago. I had never lived in the United States. I've rarely visited the country I now live in. However, many aspects of the new situation here are quite familiar. Let me begin with the members of the Hellenic Foundation. When I met some of them around a table last year and more recently, I met people who seemed very familiar to me. That is because they have their counterparts in my hometown in Sydney, where there exists another large Greek community. Regarding the Chicago Hellenic Studies Board members, I am probably right in assuming they are very busy people. They have busy working lives and they have families. And yet they dedicate a great deal of their time to promoting the cult their culture and to servicing an imagined community whose cultural well-being means a great deal. I say imagined community because it's a large community, the Greek, American, uh, the Greek Chicago community, widely scattered among Chicago's leafier suburbs and not everyone in the community knows each other, but they imagine a Greek community and people like the, uh, like the foundation, Hellenic Foundation members are driven by a need to service their community. They love Greek or Hellenic culture. These are Greeks of various vintages. Their forebears may have come before World War I, after World War I or after World War II, yet they feel the bond to this culture, the Greek culture, Hellenism. In Sydney, Melbourne, and other cities of Australia, you'll find the same kind of people, men and women whose parents worked in factories or small businesses, who themselves are now lawyers and businessmen, or who have since retired and who have very similar extracurricular activities. They promote the teaching of Greek language, they open museums, they fund university positions that relate to Greek culture and so on. They are also part of a long history that goes Far, as far back as the first Greek colonies established in Sicily in the 8th century BC, Naxos near Taormina, or Byzantion, or Naples, or Marseille, and so on. That early Greek dispersal remained connected intimately with the Greek homeland and gave back much that was intrinsically Greek, like the classical Greek urban landscape it was invented in southern Italy and then taken back to Greece. The modern Greek diaspora created other formations and always with a view to maintaining ties to a bigger Greek world. 
There is something distinctive about the modern Greek diaspora. Around the world and historically, Greek immigrants and their children seem to have a disposition to form associations. They do so more than most other groups. They may be the most prolific associators. It's an impression that I have, but I think I'm right. Compared to other groups, they seem to automatically associate. It's in their DNA. I am half jo I'm only half joking. Read any study on early Greek Americans about places like Omaha or Utah and you'll find the same story. Greeks found each other and decided not just to socialize, but to do something more, to establish institutions that would help them promote their language, their traditions and their faith. They built churches first, then came to blows, often quite bitterly, bitterly over the management of the church and its resources. They split along personal, regional and political lines, but the passion reflected the strength of their, of their passion for Greek culture. During the course of the 20th century, they gathered in Greek towns across America and Canada, where Greek businesses sprang up very quickly, cake shops, cafes, diners, sweet shops, etc., etc. Greek language newspapers followed, brotherhoods, the pattern seen here in the United States is replicated around the world, including my own country, Australia. In doing so, they attracted attention that was not warranted by their numbers. They incurred xenophobia and even violence. It is striking to me that at the height of World War I, small Greek business communities in Toronto, a small Greek commu community in Toronto uh, and in Johannesburg in South Africa and in a small mining town in Western Australia, Kalgoorlie, were the focus of mob riots in these outposts, rampaging veterans, soldiers on leave and youths, targeted prosperous Greek businesses and destroyed them. This kind of xenophobia convinced many Greek immigrants around the world to hide their ethnicity, but the general desire was to preserve it. Most of the Greek, pe Greek Orthodox people who left Greece, Cyprus or the Ottoman Empire, who came to, the, to America and Australia seemed destined to stay Greek somehow. Some made minor adjustments, such as adopting surnames like Pappas or, Pappas, or Poulos, instead of Papanastisiadis or Karatheodoropoulos, or you know, much longer names, which uh, was too much for the host society to, uh, to handle. Yet Pappas and Poulos were distinctively Greek names, Greek diaspora names. And these, aim, these kinds of names were, were part of their aim at staying Greek and they managed it primarily through the family unit, maintaining the language dependent on spoken Greek within the family unit. But they also tried to form communities and to provide their communities with churches, languages, dance classes, and uh, hold dances or balls and facilitate, to facilitate interaction. The members of the Hellenic Foundation and the people who came before them, like the body that collected the money to say buy St. Basil's Church uh, down the road here a century ago, we're dedicated to keeping it all together, to stay Greek, despite the pressures to become American, which has an had enormous attractions and symbo significant symbolic value by international standards. This story of the Greeks in the United States, in Chicago, has been told many times. It, has been, it is remembered by many in the community. It is something for which members of the Hellenic Foundation and other associations, uh, past and present, have well developed, a well-developed understanding. But does the history of Greek America and Greek Chicago count as Greek history? Is it history with a capital H? Does it count as history in Greece itself? As Greeks in the diaspora, um, are Greeks in the diaspora really discussed in history books that deal with the Greeks? Does the diaspora the great Greek dispersal have a place in the many historical accounts written by Greeks about Greece? The quick answer is not really. At best, the diaspora is a footnote, an aside. It is also something separate. History in Greece has conventionally been about Greece, the nation, about its story and its very troubled experiences since winning independence uh, in the 1820s. It is a very dramatic story, full of tragedies and some triumphs. I've just published a new book called The Edinburgh History of the Greeks, the 20th and 21st Centuries, in which I, had, uh, I and my co-author tried to explain how the, that country and Cyprus and the diaspora experienced the last 100 years. We focused mainly on Greece simply because the vast majority of Greeks live there. For a small country, it has an exceedingly dramatic tale to tell. It was also 
It, could, um, it was also a place that could not support its children and had to send them away, and to send them away often into the diaspora. The emigres are like escapees, people who found sanctuary or more rewarding working lives outside of Greece, but their stories are not told enough. Once they leave, they, are no, longer, they no longer seem of interest back home in Greece. They no longer share Greece's experiences. They are not shaped by its wars, its dictatorships, its economic crises. They no longer lived Greece. They're zisantinelada. There might be some interest in how the diaspora contributed to, the Greek, to Greek history, such as the money that they sent back in remittances, which contributed significantly to the national economy, uh, on the, all, the investments, uh, all the investments of expatriate businesses like Esso Pappas, or the great endowments to Athens as provided by the Banaki family of Alexandria, or the Greek-American lobby and money that helped to lift the famine that killed hundreds of, th uh, hundreds of thousands of people in Athens during the German occupation. Spiros Skouros of 20th century Fox played a great role here. But that's about it. The absence of the diaspora, in my view, has distorted our understanding of Greek history. Migration is a critical aspect of Greek history. Look at any phase of Greek history, whether ancient, medieval, or modern, and you'll find that migration is vital. It is nearly as critical, dare I say, as the Greek language and Greek culture. Since antiquity, a large proportion of Greek peoples lived outside of geographical Greece. When the Greek kingdom was established in the early 19th century, most Greeks lived outside of it. In 1900, about half of the Greek people in the world lives outside of Greece. So I believe a new kind of history is needed. Before, but before I explain what kind is needed, first some basic facts must be outlined. I am talking about a history of the Greeks, not Greece. What is Greece? Greece has been uh, a geographical entity. It is the southern end of the Balkans. That has been the homeland of the Greek language. It has never, it has never stayed there. People took it and moved away. Why? Some of the greatest Greek writers, particularly in the Hellenistic period, or people like Constantine Gavafi, never lived in Greece. Part of the reason why Greeks have been mobile has to do with geography. Geographically, Greece is a pile of rocks with small fertile valleys. It is the product of shifts between great tectonic plates that made and continue to make for a dramatic and picturesque, picturesque landscape. It has optimal weather for farming, but not enough farmland for a big population. That is why the early Greeks who settled in Sicily and Italy founded a greater Greece, Magna Graecia. Eco ecologically, Greece proper can never hold enough people. It has always had a population threshold. An underlying reason why there was no so much violence in Greece during the 1940s was that the Kent country had not been able to send away enough migrants in the 1920s and 30s. For the 20s, emigration relieved pressure and brought va uh, valuable remittances. When the US and other states issued restrictive immigration policies in the 1920s, the Greek countryside became overpopulated and the cities could not employ them. Scarcity of resources caused tensions and found expression in political polarization and extremism. Before border controls and passports were issued at the beginning of the 20th century, Greeks migrated routinely. They had to, not enough land and quite often not enough returns from land. People living in Greece had to be versatile. They had to grow things, but also do crafts. They also had to work in foreign towns and places seasonally, staxena, as they would say. Greek islanders who never had enough land could be found all over the Ottoman Empire, working on construction sites or were building the Suez Canal. Greeks began migrating to the United States in significant numbers before World War I. A little island like Kalimnos, Kalimnos which has precious little arable land and water and an even smaller island like Castellorizo, which has no farm at all, farms at all, had their own diaspora empires. Kalimnians and Castellorizians left but regrouped in Ukraine, in Egypt, in France, in the United States and Australia. Such places also spawned the modern diaspora. Villages in the central Peloponnese together with villages in Crete, central Greece, Epirus, and the refugees from the Ottoman Empire built a Greek empire that spread across continents of North Africa and Australia which could be seen in Africa and later um, in Africa in, and later in Western Europe, especially in West Germany. So here is my key point. 
Greeks at home and in the diaspora have tended to see themselves as part of something transnational. They belong to something that was larger, a world, an oikumene, they, or an ikumene. They do not use that word, but that sense of a wider Greek world was real. Greek orthodoxy played a central role here. For example, in 1912, one could still find small pockets of Greek-speaking communities in central Turkey, near Kaysere or Caesarea, as well as an ample, amply sized Turkish-speaking Greek Orthodox community from which Ilya Kazan comes from. These people had sufficient awareness of the fact that they belonged to a larger entity that stretched well beyond their village and the empire, which was Greek Orthodox and hence Greek. The same awareness of a global Greek Greece was shared by Greeks migrating across the Atlantic. When Greeks migrated overseas, they often sought out places where a Greek community already existed, places where relatives or people from the same village had already arrived. But they also joined up with other Greeks, people who often spoke different dialects, and they tried to establish some kind of outpost. So they gathered with people who belonged to the same world, not just people from the same village or, or region. Greeks around the world were doing the same thing. Greek history is not just about the establishment and expansion of the Greek state and the society within that state. A very large proportion of the people in the Hellenic Republic and in the Republic of Cyprus are people who have returned from the diaspora and who have an ongoing connection with it. If Greek people always migrated and built Greek communities elsewhere, and if these people, if these extraneous entities interacted with Greece proper, then Greek history ought to be about the whole Greek world. Greek history refers to something more than Greece. It includes Cyprus, but it also includes that Greek world, that ikumene, that wider world that people have always needed and made their home. As the Illinois Chair of Hellenic Studies, I will, be, I will be focusing my energies on this kind of history. It will be the one that weaves this world together and shows how it functions. That also means finding the details at the grassroots level, gathering information about how Greek, Greeks in Chicago developed their history and how it is tied with the the rest of the diaspora, and with Greece itself. The Illinois Chair in Hellenic Studies can facilitate studies like this. It can encourage Greeks in the Chicago to think about their history and about its place in Greek history. It's not peripheral. To my mind, Chicago has a central place in Greek history. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, for those wonderful remarks. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Chancellor Miranda for being with us t this evening. I think given the, our location and our close and warm relationship with the Greek community, it's uh, fitting uh, that her first investiture is for the Hellenic Chair. So uh, we're delighted to welcome you as well to UIC and to have you with us this evening. I also want to thank everyone here for joining us for this special celebration especially our distinguished guests from the Foundation for Hellenic Studies Illinois, the Council General of Greece in Chicago, Mr. Emmanuel Kubarakis, and Council Georgia Tassiopoulou, front there, Mr. Demetrius Jim Logothetis, Logoth Logoth I'm not sure if I've seen him, met him yet, the Honorary Council of, Repub of the Republic of Cyprus, Illinois, Michael C. De Dovelos, Cook County Treasurer Maria Pappas, and the Reverend Father Chrysanthos Kakaris of St. George Greek Orthodox Church in Lincoln Park. Please join me in celebrating the investiture of Professor Dumanis, and please enjoy the reception and the rest of your evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.